Good afternoon, Pastor David. <laughs> Hi, John. Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Pastor, I recently uh, came across a video that we're going to allow our audience to see. And uh, I'm going to ask, ask them to take a look at this. So it's going to come up on their screen here. And then after that, I'd like to get your thoughts on what's going on. I, I have written down why proper Bible teaching matters. And uh, you guys will take a look at it right now. We'll, we'll take about 45, 50 seconds for you to check it out. Check out this video. They say that nobody of the same sex should ever get married. Jesus goes mute on this issue. Jesus says love is sacred. There's only one unforgivable sin. The sin against the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And if you think preaching against love isn't blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, then I don't know what is. When people love each other, to break that up, that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And it's time for someone in church to speak up that what we are preaching is ridiculous. Well, Pastor, we've seen the video, we heard it, and uh, I, I'm at a loss for words. That kind of stuff is out there. As a senior pastor... Wasn't that your Tuesday morning Bible study? <laughs> I was trying to dub it in not to have you in there. <laughs> I recognize you. I, I recognize the voice. <laughs> but we see this blatant against God's word, this blatancy against God's word, and uh, encouraging all this crazy, these crazy things. It's mind-blowing. As a senior pastor who's been teaching the word of God year after year for 50 plus years. You hear this, Pastor, we see evil unmasking itself right in our very pulpits. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I think that people who don't have the ability to teach shouldn't teach. And as I viewed that particular uh, video, um, that's a prime example of it. This is an individual who doesn't know scripture. You know, for him to say that Jesus is mute on the subject of homosexuality is, is to reveal a blatant misunderstanding of Scripture. All you need to do is look at Luke chapter 17. I believe it's right around verse 28, um, where Jesus begins to speak concerning the conditions in the last days. And he speaks concerning the fact that that Lot you know, and he refers to Lot and he refers to Sodom and Gomorrah, speaks of the days as being like the days of Lot. And so for somebody to say that Jesus did not speak concerning homosexuality is for them to, to not understand that that's exactly what he was doing when he spoke concerning the conditions of the last days mm -hmm. and how that uh, Lot lived in Sodom. And that's where the... Uh, the term sodomy came from. So Jesus is distinctly stating that this is the kind of stuff that's going to be going on in the last days. You know, in the book of Jude, in verse 7, uh, Jude also uh, makes reference to the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. It speaks about uh, the sexual practices going after strange flesh. Once again, a New Testament reference to uh, that particular sin. Now, people will say, well, Jesus didn't say that in particular. Yes, indeed, he did. All you need to know is, uh, is what he's referring to in Sodom and Gomorrah quite obviously are speaking of those particular sins, particular sexual sins, including and especially homosexuality, and therefore Jesus was not mute on the subject. Hmm. And secondly, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Not just the red letters in the Gospels, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of the Spirit of God. And so, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author of Scripture and the Holy Spirit, who breathed the Word out into the prophets, etc., who wrote the Scripture, this is something that is attributable to Jesus Christ and, and the inspiration of Scripture and the proper contextual study of the Word of God in which Jesus is making reference to Sodom and Gomorrah and is specifically saying it's those conditions that led to judgment. Right. So when an individual who is standing up there in all his flesh and glory uh, preaching false teaching, well, all you need to do is once again refer to the words of Christ. And in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said in 
in response to a question asked by his disciples as they were viewing the beautiful temple and its buildings. Mm -hmm. Jesus was asked, what is the sign of your return? And he said the very first thing, repeated at least two other times in the same passage, the sign is deception. That is the primary sign of his soon mm. return, is deception. And that is what we're finding in, unfortunately, a number of pulpits throughout the United States, not to include the world. So, somebody who's, who's preaching the nonsense this guy is preaching doesn't understand. He, he's saying that, that blasphemy, blasphemy against, against the Holy Spirit is to not love. That's not what Jesus said. You know, the one unforgivable sin is to blaspheme the Spirit, which was to say that he and his works originated with Satan. And so that has nothing to do with what this, uh, this uh, unfortunate man is, is saying. To blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to resist his work of conviction in presenting to us our need for forgiveness and convicting us of our need for a Savior named Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? The Spirit has come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And so when we resist and blaspheme or reject, calling uh, the Spirit's work useless, which is basically blasphemous, which it means to be of, of something of no repute or to be dis disregarded or has no value, when we blaspheme the Spirit, we are actually saying that we don't need Jesus Christ. And so for him to be just meandering off script mm -hmm. and saying these uh, nonsensical things in the name of, of Jesus Christ, well, every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give, um, he'll have to give an explanation concerning those things. And so unfortunately, this young man is not trained in Scripture. He obviously didn't sit under anybody that influenced him to be trained in Scripture. He certainly doesn't exegete that passage, doesn't take it apart and understand what it means. He's eisegeting, mm -hmm. he's adding to it things that aren't there, and he's speaking um, in such a way that he's going to give an account for every idle word. The, the sad thing is that it looked like there's a lot of people there so people are falling for this deception in these last days. If there's a flip side to that, that there's, I mean, there's no flip side for souls being lost, but yet the imminent return of our Christ is, uh, we're at the threshold of it. Well, the imminent imminency of Jesus' return is something that the church has been taught from the very beginning. Look up because your redemption is, 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 is drawing close, you know. We, we are to live in anticipation of his return, and that's supposed to provoke us to be faithful stewards, you know. We're not to be the unfaithful one who says, my Lord delays his coming and begins to party with and to abuse his fellow servants. But, you know, we're to uh, purify ourselves even as he is pure. You know, we live in purification through confession and an awareness of our own needs and, and uh, in our desire to live a holy life that's set apart and acceptable to him. And that comes through the exhortation and proper teaching of the Word of God. And so it's sad that we have to, and I think actually this is important to do, but to, to show what's out there right now for people as a warning. And uh, for those who would say, you're not to judge, once again, Jesus said, judge with righteous judgment, John 7, 24. He never commanded us not to judge. And he certainly didn't tell us not to exercise discernment. I mean, my goodness, one of the gifts of the Spirit is discernment, you know, discerning of spirits. This is an individual who has a, um, uh, just an untrained mind. He most certainly is not trained in Scripture. I wouldn't give him opportunity to divide the Word to anybody in this church. He would have no opportunities because he, uh, he is not equipped to, he doesn't have a fear of the Lord. You know, this is the one whom I, he, I'm going to uh, show my favor to. The Lord says, he says, the one who trembles at my word. You know, and so, uh, unfortunately, there seems to be preachers like that, a dime a dozen, who are trying to become popular and are preaching, on, preaching a message that, that Jesus Christ 
um, never taught. The Word of God nowhere ever teaches, and he's just, uh, he's, he's just placing into it his messages, his own feelings that are, that are, uh, that are wrong and actually inclined towards, uh, towards, uh, towards immorality, right. frankly. Yes. That's what it is. I'm glad that we're able to give the opportunity to show it's out there, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I noticed in this video uh, there was no Bible. There was nothing to reference. It was just kind of straight from the hip, and, and that's dangerous, you know. And, and uh, we talked about this a little bit last time. He says, I hold uh, thy word above. Well, I got it mixed up. Your word I have, I have held above my name. And uh, the word of God is the importance. And so, again, wanted to show what was out there to be careful. And, uh, and you know, attend a Bible, Bible teaching church because, as I, you know, jot it here, why proper Bible teaching matters. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nothing else that matters but practice proper Bible teaching. And God said, my word I have held above my name. That's what it was. And I, I'm correcting you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come to Tuesday my morning. Helper. And once again, I told you, you shouldn't have preached that message that we're talking about today. There you go, John. <laughs> there you go once again. Well, at least the burritos are good. I mean, at least I'm told they are good. <laughs> well, that's because you're not making them, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, Pastor, thank you so much for uh, sharing that because it is it does matter, and and people are falling for anything today from the pulpit, and and I'm glad that as a any Bible teaching church would expose false teaching. Well, we need to, John. You know, at the end in the end days, in the latter t days, there's a, a, again there's an increase of false teaching. There are quite a number of people who are making quite a living mm. um, dispensing nonsense, false teachings and all, you know, they make enough money to buy private jets and to fly around the United States because they don't want to be in a in a commercial plane filled, it's a tube filled with demons, right? <laughs> and so you have to give me 200 million or whatever a uh, private jet would cost so I can go around because I'm the only person who's teaching the Word of God <laughs> in this entire nation, you know. The uh, hubris of such claims are, are you know, in, in the, their own face, in face of what they're saying is just, just uh, obvious nonsense. But, you know, God loves his, his children. He loves his, his kids, you know. And I'm, I'm of the age now that I'm well above the age of the average person. Uh, and 50 plus years of my life it has been wanting to know the things of the Lord. And, and I, I try to uh, I try to share that with people when you know people say you know who are you this guy's got energy you're just some old man sitting in a chair you know but God's word is life and and he has he has told us that we are to handle it right mm -hmm. rightly rightly dividing he says through Paul the word of truth you know making the straight cut like a somebody who's doing upholstery uses a sharp shears or knife and makes a straight cut. And, and that's what we're to do, divide it rightly, cleanly, properly, so that people will know what the Word of God actually says, so that they can build their life on truth and not some man's fabrication who's, a try, who's trying to accommodate the sins of the world and, and tell people like me and you and others who who, who believe in purity, the purity of the Word of God, and also the morality of God's right. people. You know, the Scripture makes it very clear that, that those who practice such sins will not enter the kingdom of heaven. I mean, look at the book of Revelation, look at the last chapter, and see who are outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, are not, they are not, you know, fornicators are outside. You know, and the word fornication is the root word is forneo, and it speaks concerning all forms of sexual immorality, see, in, which would include pedophilia, it would include bestiality, it would include homosexuality. It's all manner of sexual sin, practices and all of that particular uh, genre of sin, and they are outside, you know. And so for this, this, this uh, person to be up there with such passion, preaching such lies is dangerous. And so I, I do think it's a good thing that we should take the time to do Amen. this job. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Pastor David. And, and uh, again, thank you for teaching us the word week in and week out. 
we're blessed to have a church that teaches and a pastor that teaches verse by verse. Thank God for chapter all the churches. Chapter. That yes, and so thank you for that. Uh, you know, tomorrow's Wednesday, and it's a uh, uh, we're celebrating. Well, we're not celebrating. We're going to be uh, be given a demonstration of the Passover uh, seder, cedar, 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 cedar. Does it really matter? We don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Passover. <laughs> uh, so we're having Pastor Holland Davis come give us a demonstration and how the Passover really points to Christ. And that's going to be tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Invite your friends and family to come on out. Then we have Good Friday, which is going to be Friday at 7 p.m. It's going to be a special time of worship, and, and we're going to have uh, you teach on the significance of Good Friday. We'll be looking at a particular instance on Good Friday. It's a big, it'll be good. It'll be good for Good Friday. The passage is good. I hope <laughs> I can present it well. And then Sunday, the cornerstone of what we believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. and we celebrate the resurrection Amen. of our risen Savior. Amen. Services are at 8.30 a.m. and 11. And it's only for this Sunday only that we have services at 11. Usually at 10.45. Next week they'll go back to 10.45. Yeah. But uh, we have an extended time of worship. That's why we are starting second service a little later. So invite your friends and family to come on out. Excuse me, I'm a little congested here. Uh, and uh, I'm excited. It's going to be just a time of being in God's Word, worshiping the Lord, and seeing the transformational power of God's grace and mercy. Amen. So, Pastor David, thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. And we'll see you Wednesday and definitely Good Friday and definitely on Sunday. Amen. God bless you.